Hi there, and welcome to Mendel Plays. This is a first of a video series that I'm going to be doing on occasion called Three Levels. I'm going to be talking about three different levels of builds for a particular concept or a particular need. One's going to be beginner, one's going to be intermediate, and one's going to be advanced. In this game, one of the things that starts to happen is that you need to transport either liquid, gas, or materials via rails or pipes. Sometimes this is just used for efficiency to make it so that the dupes don't have to manually move certain materials from one part of the map to another, but other times it's necessary to be able to use these pipes in order to get liquid, say, into a particular kind of machinery or to get into hydroponic tiles for what you're farming. When you're doing that, you usually need to worry about how you filter out the materials within a single pipe. In this particular instance, I'm going to be talking about liquid here. In this particular instance, I have this mixed pool of different kinds of liquid. Water, polluted water, sometimes petroleum when and oil when the slicksters and the molten slicksters here excrete that stuff. And when that happens, then if you put it in all through a single pipe, then that single pipe is going to be a mix of stuff that you need to be able to separate out into their own individual elements. We're going to talk about that specifically, not just for liquids, but for all materials, whether it's liquid, gas, or conveyors, there's the same technique that you can use to make sure that one segment of pipe is only going to have in it what you really want. Level one, the built-in filter buildings. There are gas versions, liquid versions, and shipping versions of these buildings that will automatically sort out materials for you. Gas comes in to this particular gas filter. You select what material you want to filter out, and then that filtered material comes out through this yellowish pipe. Everything else gets spit out of the green to get rerouted however you want. The main positive in using this building is that it uses materials that are pretty cheap and readily available. It's all made out of ore. Most maps, you can find those resources pretty easily. The main negative is that the power draw for any of these buildings is 120 watts. And that is regardless of whether the material that you're pumping through it is the filtered material or the unfiltered material. It takes 120 watts for each time that a gas pipe segment passes through this building. So you can imagine here, this isn't that bad because all I'm doing is worrying about natural gas. But if I wanted to daisy chain, if I wanted to make sure that I separate out my natural gases and my hydrogen and my oxygen and my polluted oxygen and my carbon dioxide, I would have to build a chain. And by the time you reach a chain of five or six of these, then you're talking about occupying an entire regular power transformer circuit. And especially in early and mid game, when power is something that you have to worry about, then you want to try to minimize the draw for something like this, especially how often it's being used versus more important machinery that you need in order to run your base efficiently. Level two, automation. I'm going to be using liquid as an example here, but again, there's equivalent automation for gas and also for materials. If you use a combination of the liquid pipe element sensor with a liquid shutoff, that also allows you to effectively filter out materials. I have all of these different things here set up for different materials. This one you can see is filtering out brine. This one is filtering out salt water. This is filtering out polluted water. This is filtering out water filled out of petroleum and crude oil. So anytime that it detects, like this one here detects that this is water, then it, through automation, activates this liquid shutoff. This liquid shutoff then turns on and routes the needed liquid however you want. The main positives of using this particular method is that the power draw for each one of these liquid shutoffs is only 10 watts as opposed to 120. And that draw only happens when the shutoff is activated. So if there was a liquid that was going to pass, then you're not drawing any power. You're only drawing power when the filter is successful. The main negative is that there's a little bit more engineering that needs to be designed in order to account for any potential errors. And let me see if I can find a different example that's better than this 
that can exemplify what I mean. Alright, I couldn't find an example that existed on this particular map, so instead I decided to just rebuild my own. Here I've created that automated setup. I've got a gas element sensor here that says, okay, I'm looking for oxygen. If it detects oxygen in that tile, then it's going to activate this gas shutoff, allow that oxygen to go through, and then anything else gets determined as garbage. And you can see here where that problem is, because suppose that this gets backed up at all, then no further gas can be pushed in this direction. It forces any excess gas that you want to come out, out the other direction instead. In this, it's not necessarily a big deal because oxygen is the only thing that's coming through here, but suppose I have a whole mix of gases, then suddenly I have chlorine, sour gas, anything coming out in a different pipe segment th that I really don't want. There's a couple of easy ways to resolve this. Uh, let me build that out real fast. So here I've created a basic loop with a couple of bridges to ensure that the gas is still flowing in the right direction and to also make sure that the first thing that is going to prioritize is any of the material inside of this loop as opposed to anything that's coming out of here. So what's going to happen here is that any material that's not oxygen is going to end up being put into this loop. But in addition to the non-wanted material, any excess, like what's happening right now, of the correct stuff is also going to go through that loop. When it goes through that loop then, when this thing frees up, then the stuff that got pushed out before because of excess ends up going back into that loop and doesn't get wasted by getting routed somewhere else. Now, once you actually fill up this gas segment of unwanted material, then that's going to cause a different kind of backup because the only thing that's going to be in this loop is unwanted material and no oxygen is going to be going through. So you can create a gas container in order to create more of a buffer, reroute that material inside of this loop in a different way. So there's a little bit more engineering that's involved to make this happen, but ultimately it's more worth it because the amount of power savings that you have. Two other things to note about this, another reason why you don't do this necessarily right away, the material that you need in order to create this automation, the liquid pipe element sensor and the liquid shutoff or the gas version or the conveyor version uses refined metal not metal ore. So until you get to the stage where you have refined metal available to you, then you have to wait before you do this particular technique. The other thing to note is that if there is ever a brownout or a power issue, then regardless of whether you find the right material that should normally go through the shutoff, because there's no power to the shutoff, then that material doesn't go through and that will also go through the loop. Level three, the powerless filter design. Here, I'm filtering out materials using a powerless filter design, which uses only a series of pipes and a gas valve, which is an early building that you can make because it's made out of ore, not out of refined metal. The way this works is this gas valve has a loop that's coming from its output back into its input. And in each one of these segments is one gram of hydrogen. And because two different kinds of gas can't occupy a single segment of pipe, that means that the only thing that can actually come through this is hydrogen. Oxygen cannot get through this. And that's ensure is that oxygen is what goes through this outside area and hydrogen is the only thing that can go into this inside area. One thing that you have to account for in this powerless design is that here I have one full kilo of hydrogen, which is the max for gas that can be in these pipes. Here, if I'm going to push that one kilo through, one gram of it is going to get rejected because there's already one gram of hydrogen that's in here. Only 999 grams of hydrogen is gonna get pushed through this area. And that means that the one remaining gram, which is balanced out by the one gram loop, is gonna get pushed out of the other gas pipe in the same way that the oxygen is pushed out as being of a different element. In order to combat that, I have gas valve down here that makes sure that anything coming out on the other side has a maximum of 999 grams in each particular packet that comes through. And you can see that here, that I've taken this uh, a kilo of hydrogen from before and converted that into 999 grams with a one gram packet. Once you do that, you'll see that these two packets will end up pushing through without any issues. So the main positive of this is that you can build it really early because gas valves are early research and something that uses only ore and it uses zero power whatsoever, reserving the power that you need 
for anything else that you have, particularly in the early game. The main negative is that it takes a little bit of prep in order to actually get working. You need to make sure that you can actually accurately get just one element to be in this loop. And then you just need to take extra care to figure out exactly how you're building this to account for the full packet issue and also the more mess of bridges that you have to build in order to get it to route in the right way. So there you have it. You've got your level one beginner way of filtering out materials. You have your level two intermediate way of filtering out materials. You have your level three method of filtering out materials. I think that's about it. Hope you found this useful. If you have any suggestions or questions, then I encourage you to interact and leave a comment in the video below. Insert your standard like and subscribe ask here. And please always feel free to tell me your story because I would definitely love to hear it.